This conflict with Israel and Palestine has been going on for a while, for a long time. Um, but ever since it exploded, no pun intended, on October 7th when Hamas attacked the festival and some, some Israeli citizens, things have gotten very interesting in the political landscape here in America, okay? Factions have been broken apart and torn asunder. <laughs> people have turned against their own people, mainly in the liberal side of things, you know, the side that's for diversity and inclusion and representation, you know, DEI, ESG. We help uplift marginalized voices against the evil white man, white supremacy. Well, it seems that uh, they got smoke for anybody because ever since then, ever since Israelis got attacked on October 7th, a lot of these woke liberal universities and a lot of these students have began protesting for the citizens of Gaza, okay, which I don't have no problem with, right? Because then people have been suffering for a long time. However, a lot of these people have begun saying things that seem to uh, antagonize and call violence to Jewish people here, Israelis here. Like there was one story where uh, the, a Jewish student, I forgot what school it was, but he had they someone set fire to his door, the door of his dorm. They set it on fire. I don't know if he had like a pro-Israel thing on his door or something, but they set it on fire. And there's been other instances of situations like that that's been going on. So a lot of cases of anti-Semitism, right? Which is something that usually the progressive left would be champion championing against, you know? It's only not okay when the white people do it, okay? That's pretty much what it comes down to. <laughs> if someone's saying Jews will not replace us, oh yeah, they're evil. But now, the fact that they see these Israelis as inflicting harm onto Palestinians, now all this anti-Semitism is okay. And people in positions of power, you know, the people leading these universities, they're being okay with it. And so that leads us to present day, to right now. Universities of Harvard and MIT to resign. This weekend, the president of the University of Pennsylvania, Liz McGill, stepping down after critics blasted her testimony before Congress about anti-Semitism on campus. Harvard's president, Claudine mm. Gay, also being criticized for mm. this response. She's Does calling too, by for the, way. the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment, yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. It does not depend on the context. The answer is yes, and this... Look how she's smiling, too. Because <laughs> imagine, listen, imagine if, if the question was, does racism replace anti-Semitism for racism? Does racism go against bullying and, and yada, yada, yada? It can, depending on the context. What do you mean, depending on the context? What do I mean? So sometimes it's okay? What are you trying to say? That's crazy. That's crazy. And it's just so funny to me to see them do the things that they, like, bro... <sighs> Like, it's just funny seeing this coming from these progressive, these liberals, these woke people. This is, it's funny coming, the scene is coming from them. This is why you should resign. That congresswoman, Republican Elise Stefanik, tweeted after the resignation at UPenn. One, One down, down two, to, two go, to go. Referencing the leaders at Harvard and MIT. Harvard's president did later apologize, writing in part on X, let me be clear, calls for violence or genocide against the Jewish community or any religious or ethnic group are vile. They have no place at Harvard, and those who threaten our Jewish students will be held to account. But that hasn't hmm. quieted her critics, including the billionaire alumnus Bill Ackman, who is uh -oh. actively pushing for her resignation. Uh -oh. Jonathan Greenblatt is CEO of the Anti-Defamation League. Is oh, the ADL? Oh, boy. <laughs> the ADL. <laughs> ADL calling for these leaders to resign. I think ADL is saying we want action. And if the presidents prepare clear and well-developed plans to their boards, demonstrate how they are prepared to take real, immediate steps, I think that might allay many of the concerns. Universities across the country have faced mounting criticism over their response to the war. Some Jewish and Muslim students say too little is being done to protect them. It's important mm. for people to understand that we are all in it together and everyone is hurt and everyone feels, yeah, quite disturbed by, I mean, this um, situation. Dana Griffin, NBC News. Yeah. Yeah, so you see what's going on, okay? You see what's going on. There's so many different factors to this, and it's so funny. I don't agree with wishing harm to people, you know? Like, what? Well, just because what's going on overseas, what they got to do with somebody here, dude? What's, what's wrong with you? And I've always talked about, you know, blaming 
blaming a whole group for the actions of some people in a group, that's stupid. It's always been stupid to me. Ever since I was a little kid, and let's say one kid did something bad, now the whole pizza party canceled. Why are you canceling the whole party for everybody if just one person did something? So, that's always been my mindset from jump, since I was a little kid. And now that's how I feel about it now, okay? It's dumb. It's stupid. It's dumb. The funny thing about this, though, is that <laughs> they let this type of mindset, these types of behaviors, they let that shit run rampant. They let it run rampant for all this time. If you say something we don't like, oh, you're racist. Oh, look, look, all these white people are racist. Look, these white people do white supremacy, white national, da, 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 da. America is a racist country. America is this, America that. They're oppressors. Oppressed versus the oppressor. Oppressed versus the oppressor. That's the mindset, the Marxist language that they've been pushing on these kids. Oppressor versus the oppressed. And I'm not going to lie, ADL, the ADL, people that are in the ADL, people that push some of these progressive mindsets too, they have a hand and they've had a hand in pushing that mindset. It is what it is. That's what I was referring to in another video. Where I said some of these, some of the Jewish people that are very like progressive, they feed into what we're seeing now. They fed into what we're seeing now and they turn against them. The Frankenstein's monster. Look at the monster you created. Now that monster's coming to get you. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. But, you know, when conservatives were saying it, when conservatives were talking about it, when more right leaning people were talking about it, oh, they're stupid or crazy. They don't know what they're talking about. So, I bring this up because I, I saw this video because of Black Conservative Perspective. So, shout out Greg Foreman. This dude named Fahid Zakaria. He had something on CNN and he had, he had some things to say. Here's my take. When one thinks of America's greatest strengths, the kind of assets the world looks at with admiration and envy, America's elite universities would long have been at the top of that list. But the American public has been losing faith in these universities for good reason. Three university presidents came under fire this week for their vague and indecisive answers when asked whether calling for the genocide of Jews would violate their institution's codes of conduct. But to understand their performance, we have to understand the broad shift that has taken place at elite universities, which have gone from being centers of excellence to institutions pushing political agendas. Whoa. People sense. Whoa, no way he said that. You hear what he said? <laughs> Come on, hold on. We got to go back. We got to go back. We got to go back. No way he said what I think he just said. To institutions pushing political agendas. He said from what to what? In place at elite universities, which have gone from being centers of excellence to institutions pushing political agendas. If you if you play this and I ain't see it and I can just hear it, boy, I would have thought this was Fox News, boy. That's crazy. <laughs> this is somebody I was seeing that saying what we have been saying, what I've been saying for a long time. Something that seeing networks like CNN, networks like in MSNBC, they've been ignoring, being purposely, you know, purposely ignoring. They've acted ignorant to. And if they, you know, on off chance acknowledge that you said it, they call you a racist or a bigot or whatever. But here we go. On CNN, blatantly saying that these universities have become political propaganda farms, okay? <laughs> these universities have become political propaganda plantations that have been breeding students that have these ideologies and they bring it into the rest of the world. And that's why it's so funny because these people, you have been complicit in it. I can't give him props for calling it out because him, the people he worked for, they've been complicit in it. Complicit in it. They are part of the problem. But now that it's turned, the monster has turned its head on and turned its eyes towards you. Now you want to call it out. It don't work like that, buddy. Listen, listen, listen. This is what happens when you people of color, you know, they try to put all these minority groups in one group. As if we all get along or whatever. We all believe the same stuff. And now look. Once you become the enemy, they turn on your ass. Let's keep going. Though. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. People sense the transformation. As Paul Tuff has pointed out, the share of young adults who said a college degree was very important fell from 74% in 2013 to just 41% in 2019. <laughs> Damn. In 2018, 61% 
of those polled said higher education was headed in the wrong direction, and only 38% felt it was on the right track. Yeah, why was y'all talking about that in 2018? 70% of America's high school graduates were headed for college. Now that number is 62%. Damn. This souring on higher education makes America an outlier among all advanced nations. American universities have been neglecting a core focus on excellence in order to pursue a variety of agendas, many of them clustered around diversity and inclusion. It started with the best of intentions. This is CNN. I remind you, this is CNN. Intentions. Colleges wanted to make sure young people of all backgrounds had access to higher education and felt comfortable on campus. But those good intentions have morphed into a dogmatic ideology and turn these universities into places where the pervasive goals are political and social engineering, not academic merit. As the evidence produced for the recent Supreme Court case on affirmative action showed, universities have systematically downplayed merit-based criteria for admissions in favor of racial quotas. Whoa. Some universities' response to this ruling seems to be that they will go further down this path, eliminating the requirement for any standardized tests like the SAT. That move would allow them to then take students with little reference to objective criteria. Of course, those who would suffer most- And this is why I don't support that shit, bro. Cause look, it's been a systematic thing, a systemic thing that they've been doing. They've been trying to dumb down people's kids, bro. They've been trying to dumb down Americans, right? They want to make it, easier access for everybody and they dress it up as a you know equal opportunity we want everybody to be able to have the chance to succeed that's how they dress it up all nice and shit but that's not really what it is they want all these people to come in make the standards lower and now structurally we get these people that they're not even being taught at the same level that that they used to be taught at and then they send them out into the workforce they send them out to the world they send them out to the rest of the country and now you got these people that aren't even taught correctly they feed them with these liberal agendas of deconstructing everything and being critical theorists about everything. And it's, and it's making everything we make the rest of America weak, weak as hell. So then when certain countries try to become the next superpower, America is really structurally weakened. And they will usurp us. Usurp? What's the word? I don't know. I'll say surpass. Or you surpass. They'll or surpass us. Because we're weak. It's been... Trying to, they've been trying to cripple us, bro. That's what it is. Intellectually, physically, financially, they've been trying to cripple us, me and you, and everyone else in this country. That's what's been going on, and that's why I can't give this dude or CNN props because they have been complicit in it once again. Like I said, they've seen this has been going on, and when people, the people that actually have been talking about this for years, what do they do? They slander them, slander, slander, slander. That's all they do. They will. These people are lying to you. They will tell you what's going on is not going on. They will tell you that the sky is green, even though you see it with your own eyes. Come on, bro. Come on. And now he want to talk about. Now, he, come on, bro. Now he talk. Oh my gosh. The lowering standard. The lowering standards for the students. We used to believe in academic excellence. Shut up. Y'all seen this shit happening? Y'all let it happen. Most would be bright students from poor backgrounds who normally use tests like the SAT to demonstrate their qualifications. In the humanities, hiring for new academic positions now appears to center on the race and gender of the applicant, as well as the subject matter, which needs to be about marginalized groups. A white man studying the American presidency does not have a prayer of getting tenure at a major history department in America today. Hmm. Great inflation in the humanities is rampant. At Yale, the median grade is now an A. New subjects crop up mm. that are really political agendas, not academic fields. You can now major in diversity, equity, and inclusion. At some are colleges. you serious? Oh my God! The ever-growing boy. bureaucracy devoted to diversity. That's what I'm saying, and that's another thing too. They want to make college free, right? They want to make college free. I understand making. I say make college a little more affordable. Free though. I don't think so. I think there needs to be a barrier of entry, okay? There needs to be a barrier of entry because they're already making all these universities propaganda farms, like I said, propaganda plantations. <laughs> Trademark that because I never heard anyone say that before. Political propaganda plantations and now you want even more people to be able to come in? No. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. When they got bullshit degrees, diversity, equity, inclusion in Harvard? Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. 
And you see, a lot of people trying to get those degrees and they get those jobs, maybe. But then guess what? When the economy is down, when a recession happens and they start laying people off, those will be the first jobs that get let go. I promise you that. I promise you that. City Equity and Inclusion naturally recommends that more time and energy be spent on these issues. The most obvious lack of diversity at universities, political diversity, which clearly affects their ability to analyze many issues, is never addressed, showing that these goals are not centrally related to achieving or sustaining or building excellence. Out of this culture of diversity has grown the collection of ideas and practices that we have now all heard of. Safe spaces, trigger warnings, microaggressions. As the authors Jonathan Haidt and the Greg Luciano have mind. discussed, many of these colleges have instituted speech codes that make it a violation of university rules to say things that some groups might find offensive. Universities advise students not to speak, act, even dress in ways that might cause offense to some minority groups. <laughs> With this culture of virtue signaling growing, the George Floyd protests erupted and many wow. universities latched on. I can't believe this on CNN, bro. Effectively aligning their institutions I can't with believe these protests. It. By my memory, few took such steps even after 9-11 or during the Iraq war. In this context, it is understandable that Jewish groups would wonder, why do safe spaces, microaggressions and hate speech not apply to us? If universities can take positions against free speech to make some groups feel safe, why not us? Having coddled so many student groups for so long, university administrators found themselves squirming, unable to explain why certain groups, Jews, Asians, don't seem to count in these conversations. Having gone so far down the ideological path, these universities and these presidents could not make the case clearly that at the center of a university is the free expression of ideas, and that while <laughs> harassment and intimidation would not be tolerated, offensive speech would and should be protected. As CNN's Van Jones has eloquently said, oh, no. the point of college is to keep you physically safe, but intellectually unsafe, to force you to confront ideas that you vehemently disagree with. What we That's so funny that uh, Van Jones is the one that said that. He don't believe in that shit, though. <laughs> he don't believe in that shit. So in the House hearing this week was the inevitable result of decades of the politicization of universities. America's top colleges are no longer seen as bastions of excellence, but partisan outfits, which means they will keep getting buffeted by these political storms as they emerge. They should abandon this long misadventure into politics retrain their gaze on their core strengths and rebuild their reputations as centers of research and learning all right i'm gonna case. tell you i'm gonna tell you here right now okay this is what it is here right now i'm gonna keep it 100 percent really really real i'm gonna keep it really really real the only reason that cnn is sounding like fox news right now the only reason why cnn is sounding like youtubers like me like like black conservative perspective like officer tatum like uh, whoever else, all the other ones. I'm going to say right now, the only reason they're saying this, the same things that we've been saying is because it's now affecting Jewish people. Okay? <laughs> That's the only reason. It's affecting the ADL. You know how much pool the ADL got? The ADL has a lot of pool, okay? More so, which, which leads them to having more pool than other minority organizations like the NAACP you know they don't give a fuck what NAACP got to say about shit they don't care but if the ADL got a problem oh yeah yeah okay okay we gotta you know what I'm saying we gotta fix that we gotta you know, address that quickly 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 and that's the only reason because it's the same ADL the same ones that like I said earlier they've been the same ones pushing a lot of these ideas they've allowed this shit to run rapid but now that it's turning against them, now they, oh, oh my gosh, why would they do this stuff? Why are they doing this? This has been decades in the making. Duh, nigga, we've been telling you, dummy. <laughs> it's shit crazy, bro. It's crazy. But I'm, I'm I'm so dead serious. I'm dead serious. That's the only reason why they talk, they talking like this now. And that's the only reason why they accepted it. You know, it, I'm, if it goes any further, they're going to start talking about, oh, left wing. They're going to start saying left wing propaganda. They're going to start saying that's what they've been pushing. They're kind of keeping a little bit vague, saying they've been focusing on politics, politics, politics. They ain't say what politics. They're just saying politics. But we know what politics. 
We know. I, I really, I'm really curious to see if they start going in depth in what exactly they've been pushing, what narratives, what what ideas they've been pushing. I'll be very interested in seeing that, so I can laugh. I'm gonna laugh real hard. Okay. <laughs> Let's look at some of the comments real quick. Scratch my head. Is it really CNN reporter Farid Zakaria? Did you wake up on the right side of bed today? University students have been right on major moral and political issues since the 60s, often inspiring corrective change in society and government. Civil rights, the Vietnam War, South Carolina apartheid, and Iraq. This is a vital role. What? Okay. This nails it. Van Jones' view that the point of clause is to keep you is no longer accepted. Now the point of clause is to keep you away from any ideas from which you disagree and allow you to wallow in your trauma. Yes, exactly. Even though he's one of those people, though. Surprising and ironic take from an individual working for an institution that has abandoned the pursuit of truth and unbiased supporting of it. You will never again be known as the most trusted name in news. CNN will never. In order for America's top university to build a reputation, it will take a change in leadership. But they have a high mentality and most will fight to maintain their left-wing political obsession. Pan took the first step. How many more have the guts to follow? Yeah. So pretty much this is what it's been. Okay. So that's why in some ways it's like a good thing that this, this conflict has exploded between... Israel and Gaza because it's exposed to these financial backers, I'll say, right? That the people that they've been pushing and promoting and 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 fostering, they will they're like rabid rats. Okay? They're like rabid vermin. They will turn on you at the at the blink of an eye. They will turn on you in the blink of an eye. As soon as you fit the description of oppressed they will turn on you because they're the, I mean, oppressor, they will turn on you because they're the oppressed. But that's what y'all have been pushing. And and I know that y'all know that. I know that they know. I know that they know. That shit is so crazy to me, bro. But hey, like I said, you reap what you sow. You know, I'm seeing some people like patting him on the back. Uh, I'm not patting a nigga on the back. Fuck that. I think even Matt Walsh just said something. Oh, look. Many on the right are giving this guy credit for this monologue. He's saying what conservatives have been shouting from the rooftops for decades, yet he never acknowledges that that fact or apologizes for ignoring us. He also mentions that Jews and Asians are getting unfair treatment without saying a word about white men who are by far the most demonized and discriminated against group in the university system, which is true. In summary, he's 30 years late and still misses the mark. I award him no points and may God have mercy on his soul. Let me like that. Because that's true. You see people all the time, all these activists all these woke speakers and theorists saying we have to decenter whiteness being white is evil da, 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 da. listen i i don't got no cape for white people but that just shit like that sounds cringy and corny because you're trying to tell me to hate people bro <laughs> you're trying to tell me to hate people because of what they look like i don't give a fuck bro i dislike people based on what they do okay on a case by case basis person by person i'm not gonna base what some people did and then put it on the whole group that's stupid that's dumb, because you could do that to anybody. If with that type of reasoning and mindset, you can literally use that to justify hatred of any group of people. Any group of people. Like what, like how uh, China is treating the Uyghur Muslims. Okay, because how they're treating them, I hate all the Chinese people. Yeah, all Chinese people. They need a decent being Chinese. Come on. It's stupid. It's stupid. And that's a present example. They usually use whiteness on, on the past, like slavery, Jim Crow, civil rights era. Okay? <laughs> I'm talking about present day. Anyways, y'all got the point. Y'all get the gist. I thought it was very interesting. I want to hear what you guys think down below, though. So leave your comments down below so I can laugh. <sighs> and I'm going I'm to see if this Fareed Zakari guy, what else he's been saying. Because this is just really funny to me. December 10th, he dropped this. So literally two days ago. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. But, hey, man. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, and join the Discord. Link in the description box. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>